Hey, Jim, appreciate your time. Um, working on something about Shane and was hoping you could tell me uh, about getting to know him, uh, what your impressions have been. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm looking for stuff about his sense of humor, too, as I see him making guys laugh on a regular basis when I'm around him. Well, first of all, I think he's really a very intelligent uh, person, <clears throat> has a good understanding of the scheme, very close to Mike, you know, kind of grew up under Mike uh, as, as they uh, revolved. And uh, <clears throat> I think he, he does have a good sense of humor. You know, he knows, he knows when uh, and to lighten it up a little bit in a room. <clears throat> and again, I, I think he's a heck of a football coach uh, with uh, great expectations uh, moving ahead. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Rexrod. Hey, Jim, thanks for doing this. Uh, I had a question for you about Mike Vrabel. Having him as you did, you know, early in his NFL career, during those days or even when he departed, could you have envisioned what took place, you know, in his playing career and then what has taken place in his coaching career? Well, you know, he, he was a very bright, intelligent player. Um, when we had him, we would, you know, in Pittsburgh, we – we drafted him because he was a heck of a football player, but we were we were pretty well set at that position. We had, you know, Kevin Green, Greg Lloyd, Jason Gill, and Carlos Emmons. So <clears throat> Mike would play multiple positions, even on some on third down. We put him inside a defensive tackle. Uh, he picked things up. He was smart, loved football. And uh, <clears throat> obviously when I left, uh, he left the, the the following year to go to New England, got his opportunity. So, and I thought they did an outstanding job with him, playing him at fullback and uh, linebacker and defensive end and tight end. You know, did a lot of different things with him. So it shows you his football intelligence, and it's carried over to his coaching career. You know, he, great understanding of football from from the offense, defense, and special teams, and he's done a great job up to this point. Thanks. Uh, I think Jim Wyatt just came in. Jim, if you have a question. I did. I appreciate that. How you doing, Coach? Good. How you doing? Um, I'm doing good. And a couple for you. I, I guess one, I know Jayon said he uh, he said you were a little taller than he expected when he met you the other day after seeing you on Zoom. Any early impressions on some of your guys? I know you were chomping at the bit to get to work with them. How good has it been to be back in front of them face-to-face? -face? And any early impressions from you? Yeah, you know what? They they love football. Both those guys. I mean, all those guys in the room. They're they're actually they're fun to coach. They take coaching. You can be critical uh, when it's time to be critical. And I think you know when they do things well, we give them the praises. And uh, they I love how they take coaching and they listen and try to do what you say. And I think they're excellent. Jayon's really very intelligent. Uh, you know, he picks things up fast. Um, you know, all, all that. I think, you know, there's things he needs to work on to get better, and he's doing a great job at those, working at that. You know, there's there's not an unwillingness in that group to not get better. They all want to get better. And, and what did you see when you watched tape on David Long from last year, and, and where maybe can he take a next step in year two? Well, I think everybody needs to improve in, you know, in all, in all round areas, but – you know, David's a very instinctive football player with a good nose for the ball. And uh, for, for a rookie to go in and play, or a young guy to go and play as much as he did and played well when he was in there, um, you know, we'll see what, down the road what, uh, what the uh, tone. But you can't have enough good football players on your team, and he's getting better and better. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, he made a few mistakes. Two, the next day, he corrected them, and he's been taken off since then. So I'm excited to coach those guys. Uh, especially those three uh, in particular. And I, I see nothing but upside with all of them. Uh, David Beauclair. Jim, you, you've been around this league a while, coached a lot of defense. I'm just curious, though, as you've, as you've gotten into the playbook here, is there is there anything that, that Dean Pease had and was doing that you look at and say, wow, now there's something I, I hadn't thought of or, or considered along the way until now? Well, you know what? I've been I played ten, this is like thirty-two coaching, so you know, I've kinda of, I think I've seen most almost everything or I've seen it on film. And uh I think the big thing we have a lot of volume here. 
and these guys have a great understanding of it. And as long as that's the case, uh, you can do a lot of different things with this group. Is it a bigger playbook than you typically would have had when, when you were running defenses then? Um, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know if I compare what we did, you know, it depends on where you say we were at, you know, you know, some places like New Orleans, we had a great front and we didn't play much. We let them, we had coverage and let them rush and, you know, they had a lot of sacks. So uh, I think these guys, uh, they do a lot because they can do a lot because they're a very intelligent group. Uh, Coach, I don't have any in the queue right now, but we've kind of got people bouncing back and forth uh, between the calls. So if, if you could uh, well, good. Can I, can hang I, with I, us for a little bit, we may have people bouncing back and forth. I may jump back in if I can, Robbie. Coach, this is Jim White again. Uh, I just want to ask you about the pairing of Jay. You talked about Jay on. Just how, I guess, comforting is it or how good as a coach when you've got two backers who have familiar with each other, know each other so well on and off the field? Where, where will that show up on the field for Jayon and Rashawn? Well, I think the good thing is they're, they're very close, both of them. And they, want, they, want, they both want to be successful. And, they don't, and both of them want to win a lot of games. And uh, they put team first, which is important. They play hard. Both of them are hard-playing players, they, and they love the game. So I think, I, I, you know, just – just my take on it, just looking at those two and being around them. And uh, they're fun to coach. Uh, like I said, they, they, they take hard coaching. They, 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 uh, it's a good group. It really is. It's fun to coach them. I've been around it where it's not fun coaching guys. These guys are fun to coach. Uh, Paul Karski. Jim, uh, a little more on Shane, if I may. Uh, you talked about him kind of coming up under, under Mike's wing there. Um, how big is that as you're a coach coming up to get to, to be at the right hand of somebody who's made it or is making it? Uh, who was that for you and how much does that accelerate the process for a guy? Well, you know, I learned, uh, I, I learned more from a guy named Kay Stevenson, who was the head coach of the bills when I was playing about overall football, offense, defense, he was kind of the guy I learned uh, everything from. You know, what I mean, that learning defense. You know, there was a that's a combination. You know, Gunther Cunningham was my coordinator in uh, <coughs> in Oakland or in LA at the time. You know, and, and I've been under some good coaches. Bill Cairo was a heck of a football coach. You know, so I think you learned a little bit from everybody. Jim Moore is a heck of a football coach. I learned a lot from him, offense, defense, and special teams. So. I think you grow as you grow and the people you work for, you, you just learn different things. And uh, I think that's kind of where Mike was. Mike learned under some great coaches. Uh, Bill Belichick's a great coach. Uh, Bill O'Brien's a great coach. And, uh, you, know, you know, he's and he sucked it all in and, you know, he's taking it from those guys. You got to have something to win over. Uh, Shane's got to have something to win over Mike at that early stage, right? He's got to see something. <clears throat> Yeah, and, and whatever it was, because I wasn't there, at the, you know, with them at the time, I think that, uh, you know, Shane's very intelligent, like I said, and he, he's a willing learner. And, um, you know, he, he's kind of come up the hard way and he's worked his way up and, you know, he's deserved the opportunity that he has. Thank you. Uh, David Beauclair. Jim, Scott Booker said that, this is, he thinks this is a great time to be a safety in the NFL. I'm curious if, if you agree with that, and how have you seen that position sort of evolve over the last decade or so? Well, I'll tell you what. I think it's great that these guys are on the field playing right now and they're, and they're enjoying their life right now because once you get in this building with all those guys, everybody tunes out what's going on on the outside, whether it's – uh, racial, social injustice, and all, because th this is a f nice, tight knit family, and they enjoy being around each other, and they and they like working, and it's hard. So it's it's actually it's a, a it's a way to uh, kind of have fun as as the you know is what's going on everywhere else outside. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't clear. I was talking about the safety position in, in particular. Yeah, you know, you know the safety position. I'm not. You know, I don't coach the safeties. 
Um, I think they're very important in the game because you got to do a lot of different things nowadays and the way that people are throwing the ball. You know, people play corners and safeties. I love our two safeties. I think they're great football players. You know, they're just being around a short time, but watching them on tape, I was very impressed with them. And uh, I think they kind of fit the modern-day players, what you need right now. Uh, Terry McCormick just joined us. Terry, did you have a question? Uh, yes. Coach, talk a little bit about David Long. He's a guy, I guess, that's going to have to step up and be the third linebacker of, of, among your inside guys this year, I guess, with uh, Wesley Woodyard uh, being out. What are you seeing out of David that you like? Yeah, I, I just answered one of those questions, but I, uh, same thing. I think David's uh, very instinctive, has a good nose for the ball. He understands football. Um, you can you can put him in the game and you don't miss a beat. Uh, you're trying to teach him a number of different positions. Uh, he's caught on very well. And um, I think he's done a good job up to this point. You know, we put the pads on pretty soon, so it'd be fun to watch these guys.